How to fit reversing gear to a Stuart 5A steam engine. Part 4. Completing the fitting of the Stuart 5A valve gear. I've made replacement parts where necessary and I have a kit of parts which just need fitting together. I'm going to start with the reversing lever and drop arm assembly. So I need to remove half of the mounting bracket. The hole in this drop arm is a bit of a mess. And I think that's because the drop arm was drilled from the other side a couple of times and the hole is now oval. I re-drilled the hole in the drop arm and went all the way through the shaft. And in this clip I'm using a small taper reamer to ream the hole tapered, then I can fit a taper pin. This is the best way to secure the drop arm to the shaft. It may have been a good idea to use some Loctite retainer as well, but that's too much of a belt and braces approach. The tapered hole is not deep enough yet, so it's back to using the taper reamer. A word of caution though, when using small taper reamers you have to be careful not to snap the reamer off in the hole and also you have to be careful not to ream the hole too deeply, you don't want the pin to fall through entirely. The reamed hole is just deep enough to allow the taper pin to be tapped into it leaving a little bit showing and the part of the pin that popped through the other side I just cut off with a pair of pliers and cleaned upon the belt sander. Now it's time to fit the reversing lever. Whoever machined this reversing lever had the foresight to drill a hole in the end of it, thread it 4BA, so I can screw in a 4BA bolt to temporarily clamp the lever in position. And once I find out the exact position for the lever, I will drill the cross hole. If you're thinking, how will I know when the reversing lever is in the correct position? Well, it's quite simple really. You position the reversing lever on the quadrant, then adjust the position of the drop arm relative to the reversing lever so that the eccentric rod is perfectly in line with the valve fork on the valve spindle. Making sure that the reversing lever is firmly clamped to the shaft, move it into the other position at the other end of the quadrant, and make sure that the other eccentric rod is in line with the valve spindle fork. Although, before you can finalise the position, you need to make one of these. This is a very small but important part. It's a very simple machining and milling job. In the lathe, I reduced the diameter of the end of a piece of steel bar, until it was a very good fit in the quadrant and in this clip I'm using the turned part of the bar as a guide then once I've run a milling cutter down each side allowing the cutter just to touch the round part of the bar I know that the square part of the bar is then going to be a good fit in the quadrant so I've machined this part square on three sides depending on the accuracy of the quadrant you may get away with this after cleaning up the edges with the needle file the part is back in the lathe and I'm removing the round part entirely after which I centre drill the end deeply and then I use a drill which is tapping size for 2BA and that's followed by threading the hole with a 2BA tap. Being careful at all times not to break the drill or the tap. All I need to do now is part off the component and make sure that this knurled brass wheel complete with its steel 2BA thread fits into the part that I've just made. The quadrant needs a bit of a clean up, it's a bit rusty and so I'm cleaning it up on the normal 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper. I don't like to polish everything because when I look at full size steam engines the seldom polished all the mild steel and cast iron components generally look grey like this. I save the polishing for brass and gunmetal parts. So now with the quadrant in position and the special fitting that I've made for the back of the quadrant I can move the reversing gear up and down and clamp it in any position that I want. In this image you can see that the two pins the one on the valve fork and the one on the eccentric rod line up perfectly. Now I very carefully remove the entire assembly from the engine, I then drill all the way through one imperial drill size less than one eighth and I use the taper reamer once again to ream the hole to accept the taper pin. I've taken out the steel bolt in the end of the reversing lever and I'm going to replace it with this brass bolt which will be held in position securely by using some of this bond lock stuff. Once the liquid retainer had cured I chopped off the end of the bolt with a pair of cutters. And then by using my one inch belt sander I very carefully cleaned off the rest of the brass bolt. Simple, easy to do and very effective. To complete the job all I need to do is refit the bracket to the side of the steam chest. Finding it very difficult to resist the temptation to connect the airline, first of all I'm making sure that all the parts are free and nothing is binding. I'm a bit concerned about the proximity of one of the bolts, or should I say pins, that holds the expansion link to the eccentric rod. 
so to avoid any problems I put some spacer washers in the place shown, at each side. So everything's ready to go, is it going to run I wonder? There's only one way to find out, I've connected the airline, I'm turning on the air, I'm just going to rotate the flywheel until the piston's in the right place to go. Well it's not 100% yet, but that's a good start, it's quite encouraging. The only problem is, it will not go in reverse. I do know why, but I'm not going to show anything about that until the next episode. I think it's called a cliffhanger. That's it for this one. The men in the clean white coats are at the gate again, and I'm off back to the asylum.